Hello and welcome to Game B3. This is my first hardware review where I'm going to be taking you through Lenovo ThinkPad Helix. So here we have the Lenovo ThinkPad Helix. Wow. Mm. Yes. Um, what can I say? I've had this for about a year now. It's very thin. It's sleek. It's pretty hot. Um, not as thin as say, a MacBook Air, for example, but still very thin. Um, I have my uh, Enterprise and Skeletor to help guide me through the way here. Just in case you're wondering why they're here, my little mascots. Nonetheless, back to the laptop. So, what can I tell you? Well, I can tell you that this laptop is a, has a very nice tactile feel. Mm, tactile. And it's uh, it's rubbery, um, it's not metal and cold like you get with, say, the MacBooks. I'm referring to MacBooks a lot, aren't I? I think I'm going to be referring to this a lot towards MacBooks during this video and other tablet slash devices, but I'll explain why I'm going to do that later. Anyway, let's get back to this. So, the keys. Oh, yeah. Now, this was awesome. The keyboard is great. The best type of experience I've had on a laptop. Why? Well, it has such great key travel for a keyboard this thin. Look, look how thin that is. Crazy. And it has excellent key travel before it. Very Apple-esque keys now. I think that seems to be a standard amongst most keyboards. You have this Apple-esque type, you know, um, spacing between the keys. However, one thing that Lenovo like to point out is that it has smiley keys. That's because each key it has like this groove underneath, so to speak, where it's just got a slight dip. Extra groove means extra, I don't know, um, surface area maybe. I think it's all a bit of a gimmick just to give them something different uh, so they won't get taken to court like app, uh, from Apple. You all notice, well though, they have that red nipple. If you like nipples, you'll like this keyboard, um, especially red ones. But they also call it a nipple or a nub. That's for all those old stylies out there. So if you're an oldie that prefers your little old nub from 1995, go ahead. This is the keyboard for you. However, I don't. I like to use this thing, the trackpad. Welcome to 2014. The trackpad. Well, it's a great, great trackpad as trackpads go. Yes, again, copy Apple on the old design. But that's what they're most doing now because it's a design that works. Well, this, des this design that does work has a nice, thin, smooth design on this trackpad. Why am I saying design a lot? I can't think of anything else right now. It's quite late. But anyway, that design, yes, is nice and smooth. Um, it's a nice, large trackpad. It is a great trackpad to use. If anything, I would say it's glass, although I'm not 100% like the Apple's, but uh, whatever the experience is very similar, if not better than the Apple's trackpad in regards to gliding your finger across there are buttons on this trackpad. I'm sorry to all those oldies out there that like actual physical buttons you can see, but not to threat. It still does have physical buttons, but they are underneath the trackpad itself. Some people don't like them, some people do. You're gonna get used to it because most of these laptops are going this way now, especially Ultrabooks. I have, I have, after about a month, I did rather, after about a month, get used to it. And now I must say I prefer having it in the trackpad itself rather than trying to search for the button underneath or maintaining my thumb in that position ready to click the button. There are also two buttons up above for those who are using the nub. So don't worry, they still exist. But there's a like kind of curve or an edge. Let me see if I can get in there a little closer. Yeah, a curve or an edge that goes off the trackpad there for accessing those buttons. There's also a couple of like a ridge nipply type area. I'm referring to nipples a lot here. Maybe I've got a fetish for nipples, I don't know. And um, yeah, I suppose that's the tactile feedback for pressing that middle button, which I've never known what it's for. Please tell me in the comments below if you do, uh, for the red nub. I should find out myself though, shouldn't I? I shouldn't be so lazy. Um, right, I will mention one bad thing about the keyboard, as much as I like it. It has no backlight. So don't expect a backlight. Sorry guys, maybe in the next um, iteration of this laptop they'll improve upon that and add that backlight in. The function keys are very um, thin and small at the top, but I don't use them that often so it doesn't really bother me. I'd much rather have these more spacious in design and a nice big trackpad and that squished up the top than the other way around. 
Okay, what else is there good to say about this front exterior? Well, it has that touchscreen. Okay, and it works like any other, very functional, very responsive. However, yes, as you can see me in the reflection, it is very reflective. Bit of a downer for using it outside. But the brightness is very, very high. I can't remember the exact nit of brightness, but let's just say this. If you take it out on a sunny day, you'll still be able to see the screen, even though it's very reflective. Don't expect to see it really well, but you will see the, the screen and you'll be able to see what you're doing on an extremely sunny day. You'll also notice there's the, uh, you'll also see there's the um, Windows key. Okay, it's for accessing the start menu and going back to the desktop. And if I turn this around, there's a, let's bring it up here, there's a latch. Okay, we can use that. That was for detaching the screen, which I'll show you in a moment. If I turn around the back, we have a USB port, USB 3 to be precise. Uh, the new power connector, Square. Wow, Lenovo, you impress us yet again. Don't know why, but they've decided to turn it into a square. Maybe it's for these more thin profiles, as you can see here, and they can fit it in. The circle was perhaps a little too big for something like this. Over to the right. Oh no, Skeletor. I've just killed Skeletor. Come back. Okay, Skeletor's alive. Don't worry. Um, we have the mini display pool, and we have another USB key. USB key? We don't have a USB key, but we do have a USB 3 pool. Right. Hopefully you saw that good enough in the light. Yeah, there's better lighting conditions for you. Um, on the back here, we uh, also have a camera. I think it's five megapixels, I believe. And we have the ThinkPad logo with a tiny little red light above the eye, which indicates power on. It begins to blink gradually to tell you if it's in sleep mode when you close the lid. Over here, you have a stylus, and I'll show you more on that later. Sorry, my hand was in the way, but yes, you get the idea. Stylus, show you again, and a Lenovo um, name just there as well. Right, so what's it like in terms of weight? Well, it is pretty heavy, and that's one flaw. You see, because most of the technical components and wizardry is in this part, well, it means it's top heavy. So if I was to rest this on my hand to try and demonstrate, it, ooh, it tilts, okay? <laughs> it tilts very over to that edge. Now, I've rested this on my lap. It's not as extreme as I'm making it out there in my hand. I have rested this on my lap, but it is precariously kind of tipping just a little bit to the edge where you feel like it's going to fall. It hasn't fell yet over the past year I've been using it, so I'm sure it's fine. But it's still not a great feeling you like to have on your lap. Now, let's show you some of the tablet features. Right. If I push this lever here, or a little switch rather, okay, it stays in, and now I can go voila, and the magic appears. I now have a tablet in my hands, but there's a problem. Yes, the tablet is kind of weighty as a tablet goes, but I appreciate the fact that it is a PC inside here, so you've got to compromise. Also, because of the design, unlike, say, the Dells or the HPs um, that also have this, um, you know, this uh, tablet slash um, computer laptop design hybrid thing, um, this has sharp corners at the bottom. So when you rest this against your lap or hold it in your hands, it really digs in and doesn't feel very good. You can, if you wish tilt it that way, so you've got more of a nice corner. However, the only problem is you have to reach up to press the home button, and on the top here, you have the ventilation for the heat. So if you're resting this on your lap, it's not a pleasant experience for you, and it's not very good for the laptop itself. Whilst I'm on the top, I'll take you to the power button. The power button here is recessed in quite a lot, and you have to get your nail and really dig in there, which is kind of a silly thing, I think, personally. When you want to put the screen to sleep, which hopefully I can show you, you have to also hold it for a few seconds, and it's quite tight, and it's uh, not the best power button to use, but not a big deal. It's not um, it's not going to decide whether or not you buy the device, but it's not, like I said, the best design there when it comes to the power button. I'll also show you the stylus while we're up here as well. I'll take the stylus out. Yes, it's small. It's not an ideal size, but you've got to remember, we're putting it in the tablet. So there's a compromise there. Um, 
It does have a little switch to act as a right mouse button on the side, but there's nothing in terms of like an eraser on the end like you do get with the um, Microsoft Surface or Surface 2. So here we have a <coughs> start screen. I'll quickly show you the status itself. I've had open word open earlier before, and I'm sorry about the flicker, um, but you know, that's the way it is with 60 hertz or whatever this screen is. Um, and yes, I can draw, and it's pretty good, but as you can tell, there's a little bit of a lag there. It's just trying to catch up. I don't know if you'll see it on this video, but trust me, there is. Um, yeah, it's pretty close to the screen and feels pretty good. As styluses go, it's pretty good. I'm not going to complain about this stylus, but I feel as though styluses still have a, a way to go, not just because of this laptop, just any laptop that uses a stylus at the moment. Um, on the side here, yes, I've got to show you there, is you've got the volume buttons, and we also have our headphone slash uh, mic input, that's the one, um, and a lock screen button just below you. Probably won't be able to see that with my bad lighting. Ah, there you can, now you can see it now, hopefully. So there's your lock, there's your volumes, and there was that headphone port I was talking about. Um, now, yes, Lenovo, they like to use fancy marketing words and say there's lots of different ways you can have it. You can have it in laptop mode, and you can also turn it around and put it in presentation mode, which just basically means that you've turned the screen around. Yes, well, this view I do like. If you do decide to use it as a tablet, you'll probably use it in this view the most. Um, the reason why? Well, this rests on your lap quite nicely. And, oh, ah, no, why have you fallen apart? See, already. I'll explain that in a moment, actually. It's another small design flaw. Oh, actually, I think it touched my hand, so I won't beat up Lenovo too much there. Forgive me if you're a Lenovo fan. I don't mean to be so harsh towards it. It's just some things that they need to improve upon. Anyway, back to this. So, um, yeah, you can tilt the screen any way you want it. And it's great when you have it on your lap. Really, really, really good to have it in this mode. Really exceptional to use as a tablet device then. In fact, I use this a lot more in this mode than any other besides normal laptop mode, of course. I didn't really use it as a tablet device like this. Now, as I've got it out, I'll just show you how awkward it is to fit it in here. It's got these prongs. Can you see those prongs there that stick out? Yeah, it's got these metal prongs. It's not the best. Uh, I think the HP does it better with our laptops. And um, yeah, it's kind of hard to line up the holes sometimes and then fit it into place like you just saw earlier when it fell out. Um, yeah, it took me about a month to get used to that, but you begin to gradually line it up and it's it's not as bad as it may seem. Oh no, I, I don't know what I've got to get Skeletor today, but he's getting it from me. Um, back to the bottom though, while I pull it out. We have, hopefully you can see it there with the good lighting conditions, we have these two holes here, that's for those prongs I was showing you earlier. We have just a random thing, I have no idea. We have power, so you can charge it as a laptop, uh, tablet sorry, well, um, by itself. We have some ventilation hole here and here. We have a connector for the keyboard, so when you connect it to the keyboard, it recognizes the keyboard and so on, I won't go on any further. With that, it's self-explanatory. We have ventilation holes, which I'll explain in a second. We have a 3G. I think you might be able to get 4G now in the later ones. Simple. And we have a mini display port here, as well as a USB 2, not USB 3 like on the keyboard. USB 2 port here. Right. Back to these. What I was saying with the ventilation. Here are some fans. Two little fans. What happens is they suck the air in and then they blow the cool air up here and that goes through here and then through the tablet and comes out here all the hot air that is right so that's the little design there really really good when you use it as this it's great nice and quiet but there seems to be a little feature that when you plug it in these fans seem to go off sometimes. You might be doing the simplest task like using Word, but they will go crazy. And they've got this whining noise that kind of irritates sometimes. I'm not too bothered by it, but some people might be. So be wary that this is one of those laptops that can make that slightly loud, noisy fan from time to time. In fact, most times you have it docked to the keyboard. If I'm using Word and that, normally you'll experience that. In fact, it's going now, but you might not be able to hear it through my mic. Another thing is this flap. Yeah, the flap 
as good as it is to hide all this ugly stuff underneath, it is a bit flimsy, so expect it to pop off a couple of times, and also it can break. Fortunately, mine hasn't yet, but I'm sure you can get in contact with Lenovo and they will um, send you a replacement. Uh, they might charge you, I don't know how much. It has magnets, so it does clip into place as soon as it goes there, which is pretty cool, and it hides all that ugly behind this. Um, the other thing they want to point out to you is that was our presentation mode. You can have extended mode. What does that mean? Well, you do that. Why is it extended? Because in the keyboard we have a battery, and in the tablet we have a battery. So basically you have extended tablet mode, which means that it lasts longer on the battery. Talking of the battery, I use this at work, and I'm probably using this for about four to five hours on, the sh on the, a day that I'll be using it the most. And then it will start to die. It just dies towards the end. If you're a person that's going to be using this for Word, Excel, and any other basic thing like this, as well as surfing the internet, you're going to get four to five hours like I do. That's good. But if you're going to be using it for Photoshop or anything that pushes this laptop, you're not going to be finding it's going to last that long on the power. So be wary of that. You'll probably get about maybe four hours, I would say, maybe three and a half if you're using Photoshop extensively on or anything that pushes the um, power of this laptop. So be wary of the um, energy efficiency. It uses the old Ivy Bridge CPU rather than the new Haswell. Um, so yeah, it isn't as power efficient, although it has two batteries. I'll run some tests later in terms of its performance power and um, I'll look at some other things um, and if you do have any questions please feel free to leave them in the comments below um, but any other small things that I might have missed well there is this little latch here that what that does is it locks that in place so you won't accidentally um, the, uh, pull the uh, tablet out but if you want to put that in your bag and, and to make sure that the tablet doesn't pop out well this kind of gets in the way and it can snap so be careful of that um, other things though um, it is really speedy it's it works really well as a laptop goes I have the i7 I'm very fortunate enough remember it's dual core it's not quad core but you've got to remember they're putting in a tiny little tablet device that's pretty awesome to be able to do that um, so, and it's running 8 gigs of RAM and we've got 256 gigabyte SSD on here remember that if you uh, do have see it's really speedy and quick There's, I have no real issues in terms of this Running Photoshop, it runs really well, um, no problems there either. Um, all in all, it is a good laptop. Um, you can get a lower spec model which has an i5 and 4 gigs of RAM and 128 gigabyte hard drive, uh, SSD rather, um, but you'll find that it is. Um, it's about $1,800 or $1,798 here in Australia. Yes, I know, British accent but in Australia. Weird. Um, you can get more expensive ones, uh, like this one, like I said, that would be over $2,000, about $2,200, I believe. Um, and I don't know what prices are in America and other countries around the world, but expect to pay a premium because, obviously, it is a tablet hybrid device. If you want a device like this, great. Me personally, I do like it. I think it's a great device in terms of hybrid, but I have found now after using a hybrid device for a year, it's not really for me. The compromises of having it top heavy, of having a smaller screen, of um, the battery life in this circumstance, um, doesn't really appeal to me anymore. I prefer to have a laptop being a laptop. So, for the first time ever, I'm getting an Apple computer. I'm going to buy a MacBook Air. Now, please don't take me as one of these Apple fanboys. I am not. But, right now, it is a good price. So, I'll be doing a review of that and showing you guys what a newbie like me thinks of iOS compared to Windows 8. Uh, stay tuned, subscribe um, if you wish to see those videos and my review of the Apple MacBook Air 2014. Um, please add comments below about anything you wish uh, 
or you think I should improve upon. And don't forget to like or dislike this video.